We've just released a simple sampler, a new virtual instrument in Soundation that you can use to turn any sound into a playable instrument. And this is how it works. Record directly into the simple sampler or import an audio file. The pitch will automatically get detected and spread across the keyboard so you can play it. It has all the essential features you need to shape the sound. And you can of course use our audio effects to process it further. If you're not into sound design, we also have a library full of presets. To find the presets, simply go to the sound library, click instrument presets and search simple sampler. Click to preview the sounds and drag one into the arrangement area to use it. Now let's go through the details on how to use it. To create a new simple sampler channel, click add channel and then instrument channel. Open the bottom panel by clicking the channel icon and change the instrument to simple sampler. Now you need to add an audio sample. You can see here what formats are supported and the sample can be up to 30 seconds long. There are multiple ways of adding an audio sample. You can record straight into the sampler by clicking the record button here. I will activate the virtual keyboard so we can preview the sound by using the computer keyboard. If you have problems recording, make sure you're allowing your browser access to your microphone. And keep in mind that you can change your microphone input in the side panel under the settings tab. You can also import an audio sample either from your computer or from our library. To import an audio file from your computer, click the import audio button, navigate to the file you want and click open. You can also drag and drop the audio file from your file manager onto the sampler itself. Or to this area underneath the channels to create a new simple sampler channel. And you can do the same thing with samples from the library. Go to the sound library, click loops and samples, find your sound and drag it to the sampler or the drop area under the channels. Once you've added an audio sample, you can start tweaking the settings to get the sound that you want. You can adjust the start point with this handle. Just drag it to where you want the sound to start from. If you want to be precise, you can zoom in by pressing Ctrl or Command while scrolling with your mouse, or by pinching if you're using a trackpad. When zoomed in, you can also scroll horizontally by pressing Shift while scrolling. Similarly, you can adjust the endpoint to get rid of any unwanted sounds. Here you can adjust the gain if it's too loud or quiet. Click and drag up or down, or click and type in the exact value. Press enter to apply the change. You can also double click on it to reset it to the default value. And you can edit any of the other settings with numbered values in the same way. When using a sampler, it's important to make sure that the pitch is in tune so it sounds harmonious with all the other virtual instruments and samples in your project. When you record or import a sound into the sampler, it will automatically detect the root key for you. So in many cases, you don't even have to tune the sample. However, the detection doesn't always get it right and you might have to fine tune the pitch yourself. So it's a good idea to check the tuning and adjust it if you have to. Unless the sound doesn't have a musical pitch, of course, then you can skip this part. Let's try it on the whistling we recorded before. If you already know the exact pitch of the sample, you can simply open up the root note menu and choose the root note and octave here. For instance, if the sample is playing a D-sharp note at octave 6, you should select D-sharp and octave 6 here. When you play the D-sharp 6 note on the keyboard now, it will play the sample at the original speed and pitch. There are a few ways to tune it correctly even if you don't know the true pitch of the sample. One way is to add a new instrument channel with a basic sound like a simple sign preset. Then add a note clip and draw in a long note. Copy that note clip to the simple sampler you want to tune. Activate the loop and listen to both sounds at the same time. Now tune the simple sampler to match the pitch of the other instrument. You can change the root key just like before, but it might feel more intuitive to transpose it instead to make it a higher or lower pitch in semitones. As you transpose the pitch, you can hear how the two sounds are fighting against each other. You should also be able to hear when the sounds are getting closer to the same pitch. If it's as close as it can be, you can adjust the detune. This will change the pitch to a finer value of sense. If it isn't in tune, it'll have this pulsating sound. As it gets closer to the same pitch, 
the pulsating will slow down until it's pretty much still. Then it should be in tune. In this case, it was pretty much spot on since the simple sampler detected the right root note pitch and got lucky with the fine tune. Another way to tune the sampler is to download the tuner app on your phone and let it listen as you play the sampler. It should tell you what note you're playing, so adjust it the same way to get it in tune. If you have a sample that is too short and you want it to sustain for longer, you can activate the loop. These yellow handles will show up, which you can drag around to change what gets looped. This chunk will then get repeated as long as you hold down the note. As you can hear, there's some clicking when it loops. Let's take care of that. Click on this arrow next to the loop icon and increase the crossfade. Now the sample will fade out towards the end of the loop and will fade into the start of the loop for a smoother transition. The longer the crossfade, the longer the transition will be. Right now it's looping forwards, but you can change the loop direction. It can also loop backward or ping pong back and forth. The release mode sets what happens when you release the note you're playing. Let me increase the release so we can hear what it's doing. More on what this does later. Right now, it's set to end. This means that when you release the note, it will stop looping and play the natural end of the sample. This can be good for when you have a sound with a nice natural end to it. But if your sample doesn't have a good ending to it, it will just continue until the sample ends or the release has run out, which can sound very abrupt. If that's the case, you can opt to loop the release instead. This means that when you release the note, it will continue to loop for as long as you have set the release to. This can also be good for when the natural end is shorter than you'd want it to be. Right now, I can play multiple notes at the same time. And that is because of the current playback mode, which is set to poly, short for polyphonic. Being able to play multiple notes is great for chords. You can change it to mono, short for monophonic. Then you'll only be able to play one note at a time. This way, you won't have any notes overlapping. The new note will always cleanly cut off the last note. This mode is great for basses and leads, for example. In the monophonic mode, you also have the option to turn on glide, which is a legato glide. This means that when the notes overlap, the pitch will transition from the last note to the new note. The transition time is set by the glide time. You can make it really long for transition effects. Or you can set it to zero with an instant pitch transition, but it's different from having the glide set to off because the loop and envelope will continue as if it's one continuous note. If I turn up the attack, you can hear it swell up, but when the note changes, it continues at the sustained level. With the glide turned off, everything will re-trigger. So in this case, the sound will swell up with every new note. These four settings are the amp envelope, and they can shape the sound by controlling the volume over time. The controls are attack, decay, sustain, and release. The attack sets the time it takes to reach the maximum volume level. A low attack means it will start playing the sample quickly, resulting in us hearing the natural attack of the sound more. Setting it to zero milliseconds may result in a clicking or a popping sound. Setting it to something like five milliseconds can avoid these artifacts without there being a noticeable fade at the start. A higher attack will result in a slower swelling of the sound. This can be great for turning a sound into a pad or just to soften up the start a little bit. The release sets the time it takes for the volume to completely fade away after you release the note. A short release will sound more abrupt. This can be great for stabs. Just like with the attack, it's usually best to avoid setting it to zero milliseconds since that can cause clicks. A long release will make the sound slowly fade away. This can be great for pads or for when you want to hear more of the natural decay of the sample without needing to keep the note pressed down.
Sustain sets the volume level at which the sound will be sustained. So if it's set to 100%, it will play at full volume as long as you hold down the note. This will make the natural shape of the sample come through. When set to 0%, it will become completely silent. The time it takes for it to get to the sustain level is set by the decay. A short decay will give you more of a snappy sound, especially paired with a short attack. This makes it good for plucks and percussive sounds. A long decay makes it slowly fade away to the sustain level. This can be good for keys. If the sustain is at 100%, the decay won't make any difference since it will always be at full level. Under other settings, you can find the interpolation mode. Without getting too technical, this allows you to change the quality that the sampler is running at. You can choose between rough, decent, normal, good, and great. A lower quality setting can introduce some digital artifacts, but will require less computer power. So if your computer's struggling, you can try decreasing the interpolation quality. A lower interpolation quality doesn't mean it's bad though. Depending on the sample and what you're going for, the artifacts can give the sound more of a digital, lo-fi sound with a crunchy treble. As an example, the Ferocious Roar preset uses the rough interpolation mode and it helps give it more bite and brightness. If I set it to great, it sounds more dull. If you want a transparent sound without any noticeable artifacts, setting it to decent or normal is usually good enough. But if you want a really clean sound and your computer can handle it, you can try good or great. If you right click on the waveform, you can also access the import or record function. And you can reverse the sample to make it play backward. And you can also reset all the settings of the sampler to default. That's it for the walkthrough of the Simple Sampler. Try it out and start experimenting. That's the best way to learn it. We'll come back with more tutorials on using it to create awesome sounding instruments. So make sure to subscribe to not miss it.